Welcome back to section 7.4 on marginal distributions and independence. Definition 7.4.2 says let x and y be jointly distributed discrete random variables with joint probability mass function p of xy. The marginal probability mass function of x is p sub x of x and it is the sum over all y values of p of x y. So this x value is the same as this x value here and you're summing up over all y values. The marginal probability mass function of y is p sub y of y and it is exactly the corresponding definition. All x you're going to sum over p of x y so for whatever value y you have here that's the same value of y and you sum up over all x. So the act of finding p sub x of x is often called summing out the y because you're summing up all of the y values and then what's left is just the x and in a corresponding way the act of finding p sub y of y is often called summing out the x. So we're going to do an example where we'll apply these definitions. Example 7.4.1 the joint PMF P of XY for two discrete random variables X and Y is given in the following table. We're asked to find P of X equals 3 using the law of total probability which we reviewed in the last video. Then we're going to find the marginal distribution for X and the marginal distribution for Y. So the probability that X equals 3. Well we have a partition here. We have two possibilities for Y. Either either y is equal to 1 or y is equal to 2, right? Those are the only two possibilities. y is equal to 1. All of these values are when y is equal to 1. All of these values are when y is equal to 2. That is a partition of the sample space. Exclusive, right? They can't be both y is equal to 1 and y equals 2 at the same time and exhaustive. Those are the only two possibilities and those are all of the possibilities for y. So the probability that x is equal to 3 is, using the law of total probability, the probability that x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 1, plus the probability that x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 2, which is our notation. Then remember the and just means a comma, so x is equal to 3 comma y is equal to 1, plus the probability x is equal to 3 comma y is equal to 2, and that is our probability mass function definition, so p of 3 1 plus p of 3 2. p of 3 1 is sitting right here, it's 0 0.11, 0 0.11, plus the probability here that x is 3 and y is 2 is 0 0.04, so 0 0.04, that gives me a probability of 0 0.15. So that is the probability that x is equal to 3. Now we're asked to find the marginal distribution for x and then use it to give p of x equals 4. So rather than we know we have to sum these values up for x is equal to 4, that's what we did when x is equal to 3, but we're going to do that first by using the marginal distribution. So the marginal distribution says, right, the p sub x of x is the sum over all y values of the distribution, the PMF. And so if we sum up, for example, p of 1, p of 1 is going to be, so p sub x of x is going to be the sum over all y values, the sum over all y values of p of I was supposed to put a 1 in there. P of 1 and y. Well, what are the two y values? The two y values are 1 and 2. So that is uh, P of 1 and 1 plus P of 1 and 2. And look at that. That's exactly what we ended up by doing here. So the law of total probability is exactly what we're using to just add up the uh, marginal values, the the, the uh, values in the table to get the marginal distribution. So if I add these up, typically what people do is, I mean, we're just adding across that row. So they might they might sort of write this right here. 0 0.12 plus 0 0.18 is 0 0.2. So that's my answer here. And then rather than writing a big formula for all of them, I'll just continue to sum across the rows. 
the 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 is 0 0.3. This one we found before is 0 0.15, and this one is 0 0.35. And so look what we have here, values of x and probabilities. We have just created a new table. So this is as if we had a distribution where x can be 1, 2, 3, or 4, and its probability mass function, well, it's exactly these values here. So 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.15, and 0 0.35. So this is the marginal distribution. This is the marginal distribution for x. And then we want to give the probability that x is equal to 4. Well, I don't have to go back and sum up over all y or whatever because that's already done. That's exactly here. So I would just write that as the probability in the marginal of 4, and that is 0 0.35. And then in an absolutely analogous way, we can find a marginal distribution for y. So for each y value, I'm going to sum up all the x values. And that would mean sort of summing up down a column. And so if we add up for when y is equal to 1, we're going to have 0 0.12, 0 0.32, 0 0.4. We're going to have 0 0.51. And then add up down this column, and we're going to have 0 0.2a3, 0 0.49 which means that we can create a table for y. Now y only has two possibilities, one and two, and then its marginal p sub y of y is those two values, 0 0.51 and 0 0.49. And so the probability that y is equal to one, which really is the law of total probability encapsulated inside the marginal, well that's gonna be just p sub y of 1, which is 0 0.51. So just a couple remarks here. The name marginal distributions comes from the fact that the totals for each row and column, like we did just up here, the totals for each row and column kind of make sense to write in, in the margins. And that's where the name comes from for these distributions. So the marginal distributions is the sum in the discrete case along rows and columns, and those totals kind of go nicely in the margins. You may have seen the word marginal in your calculus course. To an econ economist, marginal, as in marginal profit or marginal cost, means something very different. You might remember that when you did the marginal cost and the marginal profit, you took the derivative. So something, the same word to an economist and to a statistician means something very different. So just be on the lookout for that.